Okay, hi! It's Thursday, it's Dear Becky and Lizzie, and here's Lizzie! <laughs> Good morning! It is foggy, but breaking up and gonna be um, 75. It's not 75 right now. No, it's like 40 something right now. Yeah, it's, I'm almost overheated enough to take this off, but look, it's my COVID cardigan. I had to. And she probably won't take it off right now because I just took off my sweater and got froze. So she, she said, <laughs> uh, she said, I'm too, I'm too hot. I'm taking it off. And then, <sighs> anyway, okay. So hi, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Show, Dear Becky and Lizzie edition-ish. A decent. No. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm t for today, I'm Becky, Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz, or Lizzie, with a Y, uh, in downtown Brevard, <laughs> North Carolina at Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. It, it, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but are we? Are we really? No. Well, maybe. <laughs> Issues? OCD. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we really are. It's, yeah, I'm tired. I stayed up late the past two nights, so I'm tired. And But I still didn't get enough done on, okay, I'm gonna start with some, start with some non-Dear Becky and Lizzie things just to get them out of the way. Oh, before we do that, we have a, a code to update. I, that's part okay. of my, what I'm talking about right now. We don't do show notes. <laughs> <laughs> I do show notes. Come on. <laughs> um, this is my segue to it. Okay. So I spent a lot of yesterday. It took a while and I'm still not done with the social media posts about what we did on the VSC yesterday um, to, to get the products online and get the advertisements online. And I'm still doing the social media posts to tell you about what I put online. So I didn't even get very far. I'm going to show you all this right now. This is the Alba. And that's the beginning of my little mini cables. That's all you can see. That's all you get. Yes, <laughs> so cool. um, but this is how the Alba knits up because the next time I see you will be Tuesday and you only have one day left or that day. You only have Tuesday once you see how wonderful this turns out, hopefully. Um, <laughs> to, um, <laughs> I saw that look. <laughs> I don't well, usually <laughs> see the looks, but that was a good one. Um, so, you only have Tuesday to like run to your computer and buy this and save um, 15%. Here, here's the hitch we discovered. So all the things I put in the newsletter about this starting and all the things I said yesterday about codes and how we were gonna have different codes for, for the yarn and for the notion, because that's what we called them in the shop was yarn of the week and notion of the week. My online system can only use one code on a sale, which, which Liz, had us test. Good for Liz. This is why there's two of us in the shop, I said, instead of just one. So many issues. Um, so we had to revamp the code. The code is now, and, and we are going to do yarn slash notion, do that. I didn't want to be too long. So product of the week is what will give you the 15% off on anything we mentioned yesterday. It, it, the, it, the, the trying it out was it well, is it up online yet? So I can put it in my shopping cart. And yes, it's there. There's no picture. There's no description. It's there. The needle okay. necklace did not look pretty because it was just a blank. Yeah. But it was an item. So I had the yarn of the week in my, in my cart mm -hmm. and yarn of the week took the discount and it was still there. And so I put the needle necklace in and typed in notion of the week and what yarn is of the week was gone. Yeah, it flipped them. It can only use one code per purchase, yep. which is to save you from, it's to save me <laughs> from having people use five codes at once on a single item and paying like a cent, which wouldn't happen anyway. But so um, product of the week is the code. I'll put it in um, the description. I put it in yesterday's description when I had to update things and it will work on anything in your cart that is one of the products of the week. Product of the week, singular. With what spaces. With spaces. With spaces. Write it out like a, you know, real English. 
you know, not that we do that anymore, but <laughs> especially online. But yes, um, and it should work. Contact us if you if it doesn't. And just a gentle reminder that this 15% off through next the next filming of a VSC um, is also at the shop. Not in the shop necessarily because you can only come in with an appointment. But if you come up on our walk up up hours today and say, what's the product of the week or the products of the week or you know, what's the yarn of the week? And we show you and you say, ooh, you can get these discounts at the shop as well. So just want to make that clear. Anyway, um, that's been an adventure, believe me. I've also made a, a category in the online shop for products of the week. So you can see them all grouped together if you'd like to. And I'll do my best to keep that updated every week. Things will change. We'll see how this goes. So I'm hoping neat. I'm hoping this week is the most laborious because it was getting it started. And I should have gotten it started before yesterday. But you you had a lot this weekend going on in addition to, you know, a billion projects. That's not a thing. <laughs> it's not a thing. That's so not a thing. <laughs> this is me when I don't get as enough sleep. I did get sleep this weekend. Okay, so let's turn to, we have one email and we have one um, wasn't specifically directed at us as a Dear Becky and Lizzie, but if we have time, we can vamp on it. So, um, I, we haven't prepped. If you notice, we have a very clean table today from shopping yesterday, indoor shopping yesterday. So we haven't prepped a whole lot of samples, even though this question could prompt some samples. So maybe that'll make me wake up by running around the shop a little bit. Why prep? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm tired. I'll stop. Dear Becky and Lizzie. Well, this says Lizzie and Becky, but my brain flops. Anyway, flops. How does... Oh, oh, hold up. Hold up. Um, okay. Okay, okay filming know. Zoom means if my phone rings, crazy things happen. It may not look like they happen, but they have. We'll edit out as much as we can. Go ahead. Dear Lizzie and Becky, should be Becky and Lizzie, but my brain, anyway. Um, how does fiber content of yarn determine what types of items are best made from it? And I just thought of another one. Um, such as what yarn works best for sweaters, socks, shawls, etc. cetera, flummoxed by fibers. Okay. Fibers to begin with. So our shop is called Sun Dragon Art and Fiber meaning art for art supplies. I mean, technically knitting is its own art form. Look at that. Ooh. And, um, and fiber, by fiber, we are referring to the different things that go into yarn. We've had people walk up to the shop and they see fiber. And I don't know if their brain transposed fabric onto that or when they see fiber, they think fabric, which is very possible. Fibers can eventually go into fabric if the yarn is woven. Is how I like to look at it, you know, because I, I was watching some, um, I'm going to go off on a tangent for a second, bear with me. I was, I was watching on YouTube, um, like, how t-shirts are made, and now it shows the Bella canvas for these t-shirts. I have to send you the link. It was really cool. And, uh, oh, no, no, okay. <laughs> this is every I day. Did, I did watch that, and that was really cool, but the one before that was more, it was about linen. And it was like this, this kind of dorky video from the 90s or the 80s. But, um, you know, like how it's made, that it was pre-internet. Was, was it like from, it's from like the flax yes. all the way through? Yeah. Like, yeah. And you, I was like, You Ooh. grow the plant, you beat yeah. it up. Like, well, you like leave it, you cut it and leave it out and turn it while it's yeah. out in the fields. And like, oh, it was so cool. And, and it was you, talking about wet spawn and dry yeah. spawn and... But, but then it was taking it down to making the, making the yarn, making the really tiny threads, and then actually weaving them in the, and so yes, technically. Linen, oh, linen, uh, it's like the implements to make flax into linen yeah. are almost medieval torture instruments. It was really cool. You should look at it. I should see if I can find the video again, because I, I went down the rabbit hole from a Bernadette Banner video or something. I'll put it in the description, but I have to find it. Um, but it was like, it was like, it was like linen or flax, the fiber of the future. And, but it was made like 30 years ago. <laughs> so that's, still, that, that segues into a perfect yes. category. 
So a like, lot of can people, I, yeah, go ahead. Can I just wrap up? The, sure. Just the, so I, t I guess technically when you see fiber on a sign, you could think there might be fabric down the road at that shop, but probably not. we use it for yarn enthusiasts. Fiber means yarn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> speaking of linen, so linen holds seven to eight times its body weight in water. Whereas cotton only holds five or six times, you know, five ish times its body weight in water. So if you're looking for like a tea towel or something, linen might be a better choice to be more absorbent. Like, and lots of people use linen even, for face cloths. Even though, like, so this is wet spun linen. Um, this is our Euroflax flax linen. Aha. Uh -huh. um, even though this might look like it's gonna be stiff. And it feels stiff often when you knit with it, but then it softens up. And people will probably look at this and be like, but it's not squishy, it can't be absorbent. And I refer you to Liz's comment about fluffy towels versus absorbent towels. Not the same, right? The, I, I read an article about squishy linen and they were absorbent. like, if you can afford linen towels, because they're like way more expensive than just fluffier, you know, absorbent towels. Mm -hmm. They were like, they're the best towel ever because they're a natural towel. They absorb more water. They're fantastic. But you can make your own washcloths and linen loves to, to get beat up. It'll soften with time. This like, is a sample our, the Euroflax people gave us and it's softer. for a top made out of linen. Yeah. I think on the whole, because people like linen stretches and cotton stretches, right? And I'm like, I don't, I haven't knit with it enough to really know. But I think based off of, again, I have to put the disclaimer on this, that we are going off our own knowledge, which in some cases is extensive and in some cases is not. Um, my experience of linen is not that it grows a whole lot or like stretches too much with time. These have been hanging up for a while and I think they're still the same size. Cotton it's it's supposedly notorious for stretching out, but I don't know. I haven't had as much experience with it. I we should we should preface. Okay, backing up a little. Most people aren't making like a duvet out of no. linen. But so. um, but but backing up a little is the family we're talking about right now in terms of fiber. Uh, these are plant fibers. We have. You have like three categories. Wow, everything's so bright because I put this down on the table. Um, you have like three general categories of fibers, the things that go into what makes up yarn. Um, I would call three categories. If you think of any more, let me know. There is animal. Which is broken up into subgroups. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, plant. And then synthetic. So. Um, what we're talking about right now is stuff made from plants. So linen made from flax. That's, you know, something you grow from the ground. Um, cotton, plant, something you grow from the ground. We have a yarn here that has nettle in it. She's like, what the heck? It's another plant fiber. It's, um, I'm not going to go into the scientific because I don't know it all of the composition of plant fibers versus animal fibers. Um, and, and why they are so different or what, you know, cotton and linen and nettle tend to be pretty sturdy though. That's right. one of the things that I'd say. Natural, sturdy, but not coming off of an animal. I just ordered some roving last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. Roving is the step before yarn. Yeah, it's pre-yarn. Fluffy, fluff and stuff. It's, it, it, it has rose roving they're using rose bushes mm -hmm. like nettle and and mm -hmm. linen like you let them dry out and then you beat the 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 fibers to where they're nothing mm -hmm. but strings and then make yarn and they're they're using rose bushes we don't know, know why someone's calling rose type plant, um so. if uh, the message starts we will stop and edit it out but until then we're going to talk over it um no so so plant the the flax thing they would get longer fibers and shorter fibers, and you can do wet spun and short spun and, and dry spun for different um, types of linen from that. So there's, there's, there's so many things we could go into that would start to get like super um, technical. And we're gonna reach the end of our expertise, that kind of thing too. But for so, like washcloths, mm -hmm. drapey stuff, 
linen softens out over time. Yeah, so yeah, what I would say about the plant fibers, um, linen does soften up over time. Um, things when you wanna wash and you want it to be durable, machine washable, cotton and linen, plant fibers start that way. They start, they're durable enough that you can throw them in the washing machine, most of them. We have some soft, 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 soft cotton here that mm, the construction might not hold up. Um, they, they start at a place where they can take a lot of beating. And if you wash and, you know, washcloths or dishcloths or things, they're not going to smell weird when they get wet. I would not use wool. I would not use an animal fiber for a washcloth. That's one thing I would say. It um, smells like wet sheets. It won't dry well or easily. It'll, yeah, mm. I wouldn't, I honestly probably wouldn't use a synthetic like acrylic. Like I've, I've heard of acrylic scrubbies and stuff, but I probably wouldn't use something like acrylic for something that needs to be durable and like, and, and um, practical like that, you know? Um, so um, acrylic, uh, viscose actually is a weird thing that sometimes viscose is made from like bamboo and made for, so people see viscose and they're like synthetic and it's like, mm, actually, it, it's, it's a kind of a plant. It's often. a natural, like there's milk viscose, there's lots of different viscoses. They take a natural substance and through a bunch of processes of chemicals and different stuff, turn it into a fiber. It's a, well, so, so it's a man-made plant so, thing. Yeah, so people might say, well, viscose and other things that fall in that category. Some people who are purists about natural fibers might say, well, it's natural, but the process to make it was not so natural, so I'm not touching it. Ah, you know, so Liz has grabbed something before we totally transition to the segue to Liz's, what Liz just grabbed. Um, we talked about plant fibers, animal fibers, the next category, things that come from living beings not grown out of the ground, <laughs> you know, that you have to give them a haircut or shear them or something. Um, Liz mentioned their subcategories. So animals, Almost anything, anything that has something coming off of them, you can you can make into yarn. Although there's fur and hair will will give you different abilities to actually do that well. Um, I think fur does a little better or something. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, but because there's because because um, alpacas have like there's hair alpacas and and fuzzy the, alpacas. It, I don't know. It gets weird. The the, the hairs <laughs> like with goats mm -hmm. like oh the, yeah, yeah. the so you know, you, you have goat, you have um, camelid, which are alpacas and camels and the camelids. I like that group. The, the llama. long necks, you know, long necks. Yeah, camelids. We only have one yarn in the shop that actually has camel in it, but alpacas and llamas fit in the camelid category. So and, and people, most people know that. Yeah. Then there's ox, musk ox, and there's yak. I mean, we have some yak mixed in with. And stuff then there's and, sheep. And then there's sheep. <laughs> So there, there are some sheep that have the, it's a double coat, so like Icelandic sheep have that guard hair mm. that sticks out and that My like, cat has a double coat, but that's totally If, different. if you wear an Icelandic sweater, you get that scratchy. Mm -hmm. Is that the overcoat it's, or the undercoat? It's the hairs that stick yeah. out. So the, the guard hairs. The guard hairs. I know that one. <laughs> and most of, <laughs> outside of like sheep, most of the other stuff have those. Yeah. And a lot of processes take out the, the guard hairs. So a lot of animal fiber is not straight up right off of the animal machine washable. Like it will felt mm -hmm. if you do that. And that wool, wool comes from sheep. Cashmere and mohair come from goats. Come from goats. Angora comes from rabbits. And, um, Alpaca comes from alpaca. We have some stuff that comes from llama. Um, and the different levels of softness, depending. And the thing is, it's so people like hear wool and they think scratchy. Because throughout the history of time, what Liz calls roving gangs of sheep, scratchy. But depending on the, the sheep, you can have like softer wools. It's kind of awesome. Um, we've talked about it a little bit on the show, I think, before. Of And what most people think of, like, people hear merino. And they think soft, right? And there's a whole lot of people out there who don't know that merino is a type of wool. And they might go, oh, no, I can't. I can't. No, it's wool. No, it's soft wool. They're, they're bred 
to be soft. The bread to be soft, which has pros and cons to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I recently discovered Blueface Lester, like in the past, or by recent, I mean year to two years, um, which is, if anything, just as soft, just if not as, softer yeah. as Merino. But people think, oh, Merino is the only soft wool, if they even know it's wool. There, there so. are so many varieties of sheep mm -hmm. that for production, Merino tends to be the big one. And so everybody's so like, oh, it's Merino. Merino. But Ooh. like BFL and they're... Blueface Lester is BFL. Yeah, there, there are so many. Yeah. The Yana we talked about yesterday is not even BFL or it's Merino. It's roving gangs of sheep. It's roving gangs of sheep, but the micron count, it's just so fine. They, they yeah. made it so fine when they, when they spun it. And it's roving, like, it actually is pencil style roving. Like, like it's, it's single ply, which means it hasn't it's been twisted. Yarn. With it's other been twisted twists, a little bit. Just a little, just enough to knit with it. So it's so really soft. It's wonderful. Um, so in the wool category, we have superwash and not superwash. And here's the thing with that. What you want to say? Oh. I'm trying not it's, to like monopolize the conversation. No. Well, superwash <laughs> and not superwash are important for yeah. different projects. You can make anything out of both. Yeah. Superwash theoretically isn't going to felt. Yes. I mean, that's the whole superwash. It's super because it's washable. Um, and, and the deal with that is. Um, what I think is so cool, I, I, I haven't looked at this much, but I just love the explanation of it, is wool, the reason it felts, if you look at it under a microscope, wool has these little scales, these little scales that overlap all along the wool. It's part of what fills the space and makes it fuzzy and warm. Um, and what makes something felt is the magic combo of heat and agitation. That's and why wet sheep don't felt. Yeah, they they don't felt to each other. Like, well, well, ah, yeah, sheep like, are stuck together. It needs it needs some <laughs> hot water and agitation, yeah. and you don't agitation. see sheep going agitate, agitate, agitate. Well, and also I don't know how much of the the rain outside is hot, but, yeah. but you know, still. So, anyway, the both of those tend to need to be in play. That's why the the um, spit joining get your wool wet. If it's one hundred percent wool, not super wash. You get it both ends wet, overlap it, friction. That gives you the yep. heat and the agitation, and suddenly your yarn is stuck back together again. Um, all fun. I love science. Okay. Um, but but what happens with the wool when it gets the heat and agitation makes those scales open up, and then they lock on, and then they close up on each other. Yeah. That's essentially what felting is. And superwash, to make superwash wool, merino, whatever, um, usually those scales are kind of chemically stripped off and that and so it won't so you can throw it in the washing machine and the heat and agitation won't make it go like this and so some people are like can i put it in the washing machine on cold it's still dicey because you just don't know even just rub by rubbing against itself in the wash that could provide some amount of heat i don't know i don't take the chance um but that's what super, that's why we say we have cascade 220 and 220 superwash and the superwash is a little thinner because stuff's been stripped off of it. And um, some people love, superwash has become super popular, but it doesn't behave the same as regular wool. It's really, we find it really hard to wind on the winder because it's slippery. Um, people say it has a tendency to grow when blocked and, and that's some of the weight and construction. It just, it doesn't have enough shape to stick to itself when it's wet and heavy. Um, and so, so there's some things it's wonderful for in durability and some things it's not as great for. Like classic wool, there's still such great things to do with classic. This is not superwash that I'm wearing right now. And it's getting fuzzy, but it's going to have great structure for its entire life, especially if I don't throw it in the washing machine. Well, and, and if you're for certain projects, yeah. if you're I'm, steaking, I'm getting away from that. We need to get back to that. <laughs> it, trying. If you're steaking, <laughs> like... You, you make an item in the round mm -hmm. and there are ways to steep and, and, and then you cut. You reinforce the edges yeah. where you're going to cut and then And then you cut it. You can't really do that with plant fibers 
or uh, it, natural wools, or natural natural. It's animals. gotta be sticky, sticky yarn. It's gotta be able to stick to it itself. It functions off of the theory that once you cut it, the ends that you've cut will all kind of, again, those stick. scales will grab onto each other and super, keep it. Shaped. Super wash won't do that. So if you stick with super wash, you will be sad. So that's a, that's a two mm -hmm. different kinds. The Go. other thing I was going to mention is this is sock yarn. So sock content is different than just regular fingering weight. All sock yarn is fingering weight, not all fingering weight is sock yarn. Behind Rebecca, we have the vivacious four ply. We just got the, wait, Dave. We just we got, got the grapes back in, in for, um, for the Cali Calliope, the Calliope sweater. So pretty. This is not sock content that is so sock content if you're making something that requires shit socks fingerless mitts whatever that you need to keep a shape a little nylon or reinforcement yeah strength. it kind of reinforces you don't get slouchy socks some people will go so far as to add in extra nylon like an extra strand of nylon or elastic when they're doing toes and heels and socks and some people will say well it's got the nylon in the content, like the 75 Merino Superwash, 25% nylon, that's enough. Yeah. The Merino Superwash with the nylon for socks makes for um, somewhat comfortable, soft, but durable socks. This is just Superwash Merino, which means I can make a shawl and if I need to, I can give it to someone who I know is gonna throw it in the washing machine, but I might have slouchy socks socks if i decide to make socks out of it so there are shawls beautiful there are thicker yarns that come with sock content we have a couple of dk nylon. um bit nylon. yeah which we is have, synthetic versus viscose so. i have a couple of dk weight i'm just gonna keep doing and we have a worsted weight yeah that is sock content it doesn't mean you can't use it for anything else yes yeah. Just but, because it's called sock weight doesn't mean you can only use it for socks. But if you're using, if you need four socks, that's the, probably the better. Mm -hmm. Liz is making a sweater amongst her many, many projects out of a patterning sock yarn. It just means it's teeny tiny. But I'm it's, it's doing sweater. it on like a 10 and a half needle. So like the needle gauge for the sock yarn is probably zeros to twos. Yeah, that's, that's and we should, we should it always. It pools different. If you're making something that that is fun and different and you don't you're not locked into the needle needles it tells you to use on the ball band. What were some of the other sorry? Well no, no, no. One thing that um that I think we were supposed to talk about, which we should, um, is not all animal fibers are the same or should be yes. used for the same things. Um I'll get an example. Alpaca is a great example of this. Alpaca is super soft. Super. So, oh, wait, let me get. Okay. So, alpaca is wonder. This is 100% alpaca. Oh, it's so soft. It's so soft. I would use this for hats and mittens. I would use it for small things. Um, the bigger the thing you make out of alpaca, because it is soft, and it, even if you have the tightest twist on it, um, it doesn't have the same kind of structure and integrity as wool does. It's almost like hair where mm -hmm. you can slide it past itself. So soft, most wonderful hats, cowls, all of those things. If the bigger you go with it, the more it, it might grow under its own weight. I, I have um, a friend gave me some alpaca sp hand spun. And I call it my cannonball because it's a, a hand, I did hand wound the ball and it's about this big. And it weighs way more than you would think. Like you pick it up and it's like, it's a cannonball. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. cause alpaca tends to be a heavier it's fiber. So, um, so one of the first things I was told as a knitter when I started to make bigger items is don't make a sweater out of alpaca. And I still stick by that because it will become a dress. Um, I, I do have a, a big cardigan that I made out of the Ushia, which has alpaca in it, but here's the, it's not 100% alpaca, and it's still growing. Um, 
get something, if you want the softness of alpaca or close to that, get something that is a mix. This is ultra alpaca from Barocco and it is half alpaca and half wool. So the wool provides the structure for, um, for something like a sweater, stitch definition, all that kind of stuff. The alpaca provides, this is softer than 100% wool. So I've made, not this color, but I have made a sweater for, out of ultra alpaca for um, my dad. Back, one of the first things I, you know, when I was really starting to get into real stuff. And it's wonderful. Ultra alpaca, right there, right? But this, I mean, Liz already had some issues blocking and, and solved it, most of them. We talked about yeah. that earlier in the week, right? But, um, but if she'd made it out of alpaca, oh my. Well, and, and we had a customer come in that had a Vogue or something. Vogue Knitting wrote a pattern for chunky alpaca from Cascade. Yeah, it, it hasn't. Beautiful, but makes me give this look because and that's, that's heavier than this. And she came in and told Rebecca, I want to make this sweater. And Rebecca went, no, you don't. Yeah, I do. was nicer than that. Well, I know, but you know, <laughs> yeah. the gist mm -hmm. is n this is why you don't. And you know, mm -hmm. and, and, she, and she did. She said, nope, I still want to make it. I was like, okay, I will pick you out yarn. We'll pick out yarn. I gave her maybe some advice. I'm like, I don't know if this will work, but maybe try to try to store it flat as often mm -hmm. as possible. Um, and she came back months later and said, you were right, but she, I think she made another one yeah. <laughs> cause she's like, yeah, there's something to that, but I really love how it feels. And so, yeah. you know, if, if that's, as long as you know that going in, have at it, you know, we, so we had some customers come up wanting to do a cardigan out of alpaca and I was like, no, no. And they were like, yes. but yeah. And I'm like, you're going to start off with a cardigan and you'll wind up with a duster. Like, you know, and there's something to be said for like, if it's, if it's thinner, if thinner strands of alpaca, um, like a sport weight or a fingering weight, maybe it'll hold up better because it's not as, it, it won't get as heavy as fast. Yeah. Right. But there's just, that's always a danger. So just know that so, alpaca or llama mixed with something. We have another one called Rapture here. Rapture and Dawson are two yarns that are llama and merino. So a soft wool mixed with a soft camelid that will have some good structure. Hats, sweaters. I'm making sweaters out of stuff like this right now um, on the back burner. I'm so. using my purple is llama. Mm -hmm. We'll see how. It but it's holds but it's up. not the only thing in your. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's the, the contrasty rose, so we'll see if those contrasty I think rows... it'll be, again, because it's thinner, I think yeah. it'll be okay. Um, I mean, if we leave it hanging like we have the ones in the front window, it could stretch out a little bit, you know. So um, I feel like uh, we're, we're going to have to wrap up in a few minutes, which means we're not going to do blocking justice, so we're probably not going to talk about that today. We, we, we definitely could dedicate, like, if there's ever um, a week where we don't have a Dear Becky and Lizzie question, we could talk blocking for like 40 okay. minutes at least. Um, but I want to, I'm trying to think about if there's anything else we want to, um, I know there's things we could have talked about. Let's check her, the, the, the email, the email again to see, like we talked about socks. If you're allergic to wool and some people or, or alpaca, people will know if they're, if it's itchy is one thing. If you're full blown allergic to something, that's totally different. And we get that. I know people who make socks out of, bamboo and cotton because they're allergic to wool and that's it's not like you can only make socks out of merino or wool superwash no you can there's a lot of crossover there's a lot of like I wouldn't say you can only make sweaters out of this and you can only make socks out of that but there's some guidelines that will help it be more productive I wouldn't use if you need something that needs to breathe more like you live in Florida you live in places with hot temperatures the plant fibers are going to um, perhaps let things breathe a little better, right? Um, they're, they're maybe not gonna be as hot on you, but something made out of merino, something thin, could still let some air through. So, you know, I it, wouldn't make a whole lot of plant fiber stuff for really cold climates. I would want the warm and wools. If you, um, like mohair, and depending on the, the kind of, production like anything with hair sticking out of it like 
they're tiny little hairs that just collect. I, I always, they're, they, they collect molecules of air and then your body heats that up and you have devil's yarn really fast. But depending on where you live, that could be a plus to add warmth to something mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, yeah. I just want to And do, structure, like yeah. mohair, because it's mohair and silk, usually the thin yeah. stuff we call mohair is a mohair silk combo. And so that will, um, that will add some structure. Like I will sometimes add that to washable wool to make thick socks that I want to have the structure and not have the slouchy heels and things like that. Um, what was the email? Sorry. The email, uh, it just, what are the, what types of items are best made from the different fibers and what yarns work best for sweaters, socks, shawls, etc. Everything. We need sweaters, socks, and shawls, kind of, kind of, and somewhat. A lot of this is, it's guidelines. It's mm -hmm. not like, you can, you can make socks out of whatever yarn you want to use. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not work as well as others, but you yeah, know, like it's, I, I don't know it's if more I'd, guidelines than... I don't know if I'd make socks out of linen, but I could. There, there are you know. linen socks, yeah. but like you'd have to have suspenders or something to hold them up. Garters? Garters, those. Suspenders for your calves <laughs> called garters. Um, <laughs> what if you want slouchy socks? You know, there's a thing. Yeah. But a lot of things that are... Um, that I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> um, when when things are machine made, they, they make things out of out of like linen and other stuff made by machine with really fine thread counts. Changes sometimes how the how the fabric behaves. Yeah. Um, and it depends on how thick or thin you want to go with your yarn. Is going to change how the fabric behaves. The fabric that's created, I do call it fabric once I've knitted something. Um, but when I talk about fiber, I'm talking about what goes into yarn. Definitely. So, um, so people have come up with all different combos. Like we've got a yarn that's one strand of wool and one strand of cotton to just give you a different combo and a different look. We have blends where they're actually blended together in the fiber itself and you can't see them as separate. Um, but it provides a different level of strength because you've got some plant fiber mixed with some animal fiber or different animal fibers. And I mean, it, it, the world explodes, which is why it's so hard when people come up looking for a really specific yarn here, because the yarn world is just massive at this point. And, so. and in the end, it's all just sticks, plural and singular for crocheters and string. Like stabbies and string. That's, that's, <laughs> sticks that's and string, sticks right? and string. It's um, like you can, We've had people come in going, experiment. what can I make out of this? And I'm like, Anything you want. whatever you want, it depends on how much you want to spend. If yeah. you buy super bulky yarn, you can make a hat out of one ish, but to do a blanket, you're going to need like a crap ton. way more than, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, for the most part, you can make anything you want. It just, yeah. Well, people will be like, well, I want to make a blanket. So I want to use bulky yarn. So it goes the super bulky. So it goes fast. And it's like, that's true, but it's going to take you a lot and it's going to be it's expensive. Yeah. Depending on, that's one thing that uh, we can maybe wrap up on is sometimes the natural fibers, um, a lot of times the synthetic will come in either as like nylon for strength or acrylic to bring the price down, to be quite honest, because something that is manufactured rather than all the time to actually shear the sheet or collect the flax or things like that, something that is manufactured like acrylic, it, it's gonna reduce the cost. And that's a lot of the reason why people will use acrylic, either allergies or because a blanket out of an all natural fiber is expensive. If you have money and, or, or it's, it's an heirloom and you wanna do that, that's fantastic. But it, it, the cost gets up there. And a lot of people when they hear, just like when they heard wool, they think scratchy, they think the same about acrylic. Cause they're like, Ooh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, not natural. So it's nasty and it is, um, and you might think it's nasty no matter what, that's fine. That's your deal. And sometimes I'm a little yarn snobby about acrylic as well. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'm making stuff for my niece and nephew and it's gotta be machine washable and I can't spend a lot on it and I'm making it out of Encore, which is wool and acrylic. Um, and it works and it's great. Or right. making things for kids that are going to outgrow them. How much money do you want to sink into that? 
But what I was gonna say, and then whatever you want to say, is um, is not all acrylics are the same anymore. It's not like um, it, everyone. A lot of people when they think of acrylic, they think of Red Heart Super Saver, which is not the softest yarn on the market. But there are a lot of acrylics that actually end up being pretty soft. We have one here called Major. It's 100% acrylic, actually pretty soft. So for baby blankets, for things that kids are gonna outgrow potentially, it can be a good option. Pre-pandemic times, I used to go buy sweaters, 100% wool sweaters, cut them up and make sweater coats. And I could, several years ago, several, several years ago, I could run my hand down a rack of sweaters at like Goodwill or whatever and tell you which ones were 100% wool, which ones were 100% cashmere, mm -hmm. just by the feel of them. And, and then- Which ones have acrylic in them. Yeah, and which ones were acrylic. And moving forward, I have to actually look at the tags now because I'll run my hands down the rack of sweaters and it'll be like, that's cashmere. And you pull it out and it's 90% acrylic with or 95 percent acrylic with a tiny little bit of cashmere in it mm -hmm. but they they with the acrylics even in the yarns they figured out how to make them we have the 100 percent super super soft acrylic but then throw a tiny little bit of wool in there and nobody really knows the difference and it has a little more structure yep you know a little more it's all good yeah um I'll, I also, I, don't know, I should just end, <laughs> but I'm thinking about uh, the superwash merino and how I've got, I've got a sweater up there that I haven't tried it on in, in years. So it might've stretched out. It's that whole thing since there's the little scales, since they're gone there, it could over time, it won't be as bad as, as, um, it won't be as bad as alpaca, but there's nothing to help it hold its shape. Well, and so there's a little danger there. Dis it might not be. But a displaying danger. sweaters in a yarn shop is different than like if you have a sweater at home, you're not going most please don't hang hand knit sweaters should not be hung up. Don't hang up your hand knit sweaters, especially if they're made out of thick, heavy yarn. Yeah. Please find a nice way to um, I mean, even with my, with store bought stuff that I would hang up because you know I was a teacher in my previous life and I had to look snazzy and I would have the hanger bumps. I would look like my shoulders had little horns. You don't want that in your hand mitts. Some of that you could block out and some of it you can't. So just store them nice and folded up. Sometimes people say the cedar chests, um, lavender on mothballs, not mothballs, cotton balls. Mothballs will make no things smell like mothballs. Don't do that. I'm sorry. Um, one of our, shout out to Carol, she does lavender on cotton balls um, in with her and she keeps them zip locked up. Um, I, I mean, I could be jinxing myself, but I have not had rodent or moth problems at my house or in the shop. Um, but some people will, depending on where they live and how rural it is or how possible it is to having animals, insects, keep stuff stored in airtight containers. You know, it might not sound like fancy old school charm that you might think of with knitting and crochet, Protect your stuff. You, yeah. you put a lot of work and energy into it. Protect it. So anyway, it's like two minutes before ten. Did you want to say anything else? Nope. Okay. I was just checking the time. Vikings, because we've had the phones wrong twice. So I'm sure someone wants to reach us and is hoping to reach us before we open, but we start answering the phone at ten, which is in like thirty seconds. So we're gonna go get ready for that. We're gonna try to get this. I'm looking at that one there. She's looking at her iPhone. I'm going by my clock there, which is probably incorrect, but that's my time gauge right now. So um, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> we love you all, we miss you. Um, please check out our products of the week. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Send us questions. If no one sends us questions for next week, we will talk blocking. Um, and subscribe if you haven't, share. We're at 410, we made it, we're like, we're like, Climbing up the hill with subscribers right now. I'd no love to hit steady. five. I'd love to hit five hundred, but that's gonna take forever. It's okay. We love you all. Have a great weekend. Join us for knit night tomorrow night if you want. And uh, adventures of Liz and Rebecca continue on Tuesday. Tuesday or Monday. Tuesday. Will Rebecca have more projects? Oh, of course. Will I be done with any? Is the real question. <laughs>